Good morning, YouTubers, or whatever time of day it is where you are. Today I'm making a video about um, the process that I follow to remove glass blocks out of a glass block window. As you can see here, this is a six block by six block bathroom window above a bathtub, a jetted bathtub. The reason these blocks are going to be removed is to allow space for a window which will create some air movement in this bathroom. This process is not going to involve shattering, uh, <laughs> at least not intentionally shattering a, a piece of the glass block, but it's going to try to remove it um, in, in a, a large segment. I'm going to be removing two by four eight blocks and replacing it with that window right there. So I'm going to show where the window will go and then we'll get into the uh, demolition process. So this window is going to sit right in here and it fits just right in the space. Might be a little tight. But that's going to make it sit well. The next part of the video is getting your tools together, or the tools that I'm using to get together to do this. Extremely important because a lot of dust and possible little chunks of mortar are going to fly around when you do this kind of job. You gotta have the right kind of protection. You gotta have some eye protection. I have these. They do mist up and get real foggy. If you don't like that, you can get the kind that are completely ventilated without this stuff on the side that uh, allows moisture. And with gloves again, also you're gonna be, this is a lot of hard work. So you're gonna be sweating a little bit. And um, my gloves, you can see they're turned inside out right now because yesterday, they were really wet inside, so uh, you gotta wear a breathing mask. It's an N95, 95% filtration or particle blocking rating. 95. Uh, this is a felt mask. It looks a little different than some of the some of the round masks that you might have seen out there. And I find this one works very well, and it leaves maybe less of a line on your face when you're done. Um, there's going to be two power tools used. Drill and a reciprocating saw. There, A lot of the, the stuff on the internet that I read doing my research before I did this said that for drilling through cement you want to use a hammer drill. Um, I did not own a hammer drill and I'm finding that this drill will work. And I also had concerns that the hammer drill going through the glass block wouldn't be such a good idea. It's pretty, I mean, you, this is a pretty tight cut that you're trying to effect. So I'm just using a standard drill. And then uh, to make it a little easier on yourself, not having to do as much chipping, when well, you're still gonna have to do some chipping, um, the sawzall or reciprocating saw right here. And what I found is that it's very important to select the right kind of blade for your reciprocating saw. Um, because the first one you go for without knowing what's right, you're probably going to wind up getting the one that's wrong. I haven't tried it just yet, but I'm hoping it's going to work better than what I have been using. It is a grit. This one is a diamond grit blade. I could not find a 6 inch, so I wound up having to get an 8 inch. I went to two different big box stores. And uh, you see, it doesn't have the saw, it just has a grit. What happens when you use the saw is that it's going to wear out really fast and you're going to have to push really hard and you're going to encounter places where you can't push the saw through. Uh, going backwards, because I jumped ahead to the saw. The first thing you use is going to be the drill and you just get a six inch masonry drill bit. 
So, you know, different kinds of drill, between the drill and the hammer drill, you use different kind of bits, so make sure that you're using them, that you do buy the right kind of bit, or keep your receipts, or just be happy getting your Home Depot credit. So, here we are at the window. Wonderful. So I've already spent, a I've dedicated already two two hour periods and some cleanup time in between and I'm about a third of the way through because I've done these two, that one, that's four squares, and then just this square right here and some of this stuff. Um, the first part is to drill a series of holes. I hope this is showing up. Just start in a corner and drill out the holes. Go to another corner, drill out the holes. You want to create a space all the way to the other side that you can insert your reciprocating saw and then start going across. You do want to have the holes in there before you start going across because this reciprocating saw does have a hard time getting through this right here. And it's going to be able to get through all this more easily I'm probably going to start up here where I've already gone through and through the process of chipping and drilling. Drill first, then chip, then saw. Um, then you can just go straight down through with the saw until you get all the way to the bottom. So let's do a little bit of uh, drill and then chip. Okay, so one thing I didn't mention um, in the previous part of the video is that uh, as you're beginning it's a good idea to put some holes through here you're going to um, find that it might be helpful to go outside around the other side and do some chipping from the other side as well just to make sure that you have a clean full uh, area that's already broken out before you use your saw so the first thing is Look up your drill. Get ready to do some drilling. And again, start from the corner. This is already busted out, but this part is not busted out at all. So I'm going to go ahead and just drill through here, make a few drills, and then uh, move on to the next part. The only tip I would say about doing this type of drill is you, if you're going to damage some of the glass block, you want to damage the block that you're going to take out and not the blocks above and around it. So as you get through the end of it, you might feel the resistance because the tip is hitting the other side of the block. If you've begun kind of angling down, then you're going to damage this one, not the top one. Um, I would continue drilling all the way across this entire thing, about half inch intervals, um, before you go on to the chipping and then the sawing part. Just to save time, I'm watching the video, I'm going to go straight to the chipping part of this. I'm um, just using some flathead screwdrivers. You could use some chisels if you could find the right size. Um, one quarter inch is working quite well, but also a little bit smaller than quarter inch, three sixteenths. Um, might, might have been a little bit better even. So, you know, you need to chisel this out now. Another tool. Good old rubber mallet. Rubber mallet. Doesn't make as much noise or vibrate as much in your hands. You're going to start chipping out the masonry here. Just creating a space for your saw. Here. Glass block, if it was made correctly, is going to have some metal runners in between. It's kind of like how rebar is inside cement. It's just little, very thin metal runners inside the concrete lines. And uh, they're not too hard to get around or get, get through. You want to be aware of them as you use your 
saw in the next one. Okay, so I think the saw blade is going to fit this way now. I know for sure it's going to fit this way. And I already have my holes drilled going down all the way to the bottom. So let's try out the new diamond grit saw blade because this wooden metal blade is just getting tore up and not, not going through very well either. I don't recommend that you do this job if you're not very familiar with your drill and your reciprocating saw. At this point, I ain't too worried about the camera angle. I'm more worried about what I'm doing. I ran against the uh, metal rebar piece that I was talking about earlier and I'm kind of freeing it and loosening it up from the top line here before I go in and try to start to uh, open up the whole thing so okay I just want to show you that here you can see the reason this one broke is because when the drill bit was coming through here it was guiding over the rebar piece so it was coming up against this glass because it was pushed up by the rebar piece and it just popped it out. So um, that's why I was saying be very aware of where your rebar pieces are. Okay, so at this point I have definitely made a determination that you've got to take this out two times. Not as a whole piece um, of two by four, but as two two by four pieces. So the cuts are complete along these four just use my hand to show you these four and it's it's free so it's already wobbling and here again the totally indispensable rubber mallet just tap on it to push the blocks out towards the outside Okay, here's another tool that you absolutely have to have to do this job. Crowbar. Um, when I was taking out the first four pieces from the other side, found out that uh, it's not going to stay together, so you know, don't shim it with the pieces of the, the glass. Just uh, what I did right now is I'm just shimming it um, with the window that's going to go in there. And Actually, these two pieces up here, as I was removing the ones below it, they didn't really have any danger of falling down. Um, didn't notice any cracking in the, any real cracking in the cement, so pretty good to go. Gonna take out the next four pieces, rough it in there with some shims, and leave it alone for a while.
All right, there it is, roughed in window. Time to GTFO and uh, did a little bit of cleanup and then it's time to clean yourself up. So a couple of points, um, make sure you get two carbide grit blades because they do wear out. Um, the diamond grit is a little more expensive. There's also the carbide grit. Um, other than that, everything you need to know you will learn along the way. Thank you so much.